So thank you very much, and, and just, let's dive into the deep end. The idea of the whole idea of the product owner in Agile is is a really critical role. And interestingly enough, if you look at the history of Agile, it's one of the newest roles. If you go back into the early Scrum Guides, the whole idea of a product owner wasn't even called out. But regardless of when it was added, the product owner role really acts as that bridge between the business and the technical domains. The role is difficult. Any bridging role is difficult, if for no other reason than both domains, the business domain and the technical domain, have different languages. And if we you know, think on, for a few seconds on the words of Ken Schwaber, um, you know, we, we Ken talked about the whole idea of the product owner in Scrum. It foreshadowed why it was difficult. And you know, I'm not going to read you Ken's statement there, but what I want to point out is there's a couple of phrases in this whole this whole piece, in this paragraph that, that I called out that can, if done badly, create a monumental mess. So the first one is the one and only, the one and only person responsible for managing the backlog. And, and the word managing, we can unpack and we can say, well, someone's going to maintain it. But managing, in this case, really is all about prioritizing and deciding when things have to be done. So the one and only, again, hard statement. And then the other phrase I want to call out of here is that ensures value. The product owner is ultimately ultimately responsible for the value that any piece of work delivers. And, and again, that sounds very, very straight, you know, very hard, and, and it sounds like something that, that we could easily sort of, uh, you know, mess around with. So I, I'd suggest that the product owner role In general, I from from option not only of myself and we'll we'll see uh, others' opinions on the matter in a few minutes, but the the product owner role is one that is often messed up, and it's messed up because of a lot of different reasons: stress, tension, hostility between the business environment and the technical environment, and when any of that occurs. That stress, that tension, that hostility transmits back to the team. You get into scenarios where the team can start to question and say, hey, you know what? Perhaps they don't understand. Perhaps they don't understand how work really needs to be done. But, but maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just Tom thinking through the haze of, of 20 years worth of projects, some Agile, some not. And, and maybe I travel in the wrong circles. What I did is, given that I've been podcasting and interviewing people in the world of Agile and other methods for 11 years now, I reached out to roughly you know, several hundred different product people who play product owner roles and asked them directly, I asked them one question. Why do you feel the product owner role is difficult? <laughs> and obviously, um, knowing some of the folks that I asked, they were a tad chung and cheek. The first answer I got back from a gentleman named Kent McDonald was, that's of course assumes that I feel the product owner role is difficult. Now, I'll be honest with you, if he had just stopped there, I would have said, okay, there are people out there that find this role easy. Um, but but he didn't, right? And and we'll see some of his other comments as we walk through here. So again, this isn't just an individual's opinion. This is not just the idea that from looking at a small subset of projects. Um, this is you know other gurus, other people in the industry who have looked at the product owner role, find it difficult for a lot of different reasons.
affect the product owner role a little bit. Let's remember that a product owner is not a project owner per se. And, and I'd like to actually step back and say, you know, we do ourselves a great disservice in a lot of cases by thinking of things as projects. Many patients have that word product. They, they use it, and, and, but they have not defined it, and they conflate it with all sorts of other things. A product orientation means making decisions that, that really cr are cross-cutting in most organizations. It isn't just a technical team. It isn't just a second technical team. It has to incorporate business. It, in some cases, it has to incorporate manufacturing. And when you think of, of a systems thinking point of view, products cross-cut many different or parts of the organization. And we sometimes take a very parochial view and sub subsect that, you know, take it apart and say, you know what, this development team, this maintenance team, that's what we're really talking about. That's their product. When in reality, fixing any or intervening or changing any individual step along the way really may not impact the overall thing. So we see you know, another product owner, a strategic planning product owner, that, that references this and suggests that, that we have to take a much more product orientation than we do a project orientation. You know, many initiatives are highly complex and extend across multiple business organizations. That means ever playing that product owner role really has to have vision into all of these individual subsets. So I miss if, if I didn't drag up the whole idea of the hashtag no project focus as we talk through this part of the scenario. Taking a product point of view recognizes that software isn't temporary. The project is temporary. It goes on, it, you know, the software goes on. It can be impacted many times. It follows a life cycle that transcends starting with a few requirements and doing an implementation. It requires you know, a, a significant change in orientation if we start to think about what we're working with as products and then trace them back into the business. Successful software doesn't stop changing. Dead software stops changing. Um, I have been part and parcel of many product companies, including one that my wife owned and managed for several years that did apps. And, and this is sort of a microcosm. It's funny. I wake up every morning, and, and maybe I'm a tad demented, and I pick up my iPhone, and I pick up my iPad, and I pick up my, my uh, Android phone, and I check for updates because I want to know, well, hey, I get a kick out of seeing the updates happen. But at the same time, software that doesn't get updated, if I'm not getting new features, I'm going to suggest that that is, it feels dead to me. So again, a product point of view suggests that we have a long-term vision, a map into the future, a roadmap that extends more than just the current project. 90 days, 180 days, five years into the future, again, at different levels of granularity and specificity. Products require permanent teams. And this is one of the fundamental problems that many IT organizations have with this product organization. Teams form up, they attack a project, they go away. I'll be honest with you, you know, the project management book that I've written has words like that in it. 